live streaming. Hey everybody, happy Monday. If you're watching this on a replay, tell me in the contact in the comments. Hashtag replay. I hope everybody's having a good day. There we go. All my devices are telling me I'm not live right now. Just in case I didn't know. So as you pop on, tell me hi, tell me what you're working on. Hi, Cindy. For a hot minute, I thought that I was going to be doing this on my own. I didn't think um, I didn't think Melissa was gonna be able to be on because she's out of town, <laughs> and I don't like winging it on my own. <laughs> Holly's working on more socks, a shawl, a hat, a blanket. Shar, thank you. We'll chat about the top. Debbie, section thirteen. Sherry, Kathy. Nicole working on the firework sweater. I did actually bust out my um, still water sweater this afternoon to work on the sleeves a little bit. I just need to force myself to get the sleeves done. Bonnie's working on pinions by Casa Pinka. That one looks like, I mean, it's written for a whole bunch of mini stains, but it looks like it would be a really good one for um, using up stash yarn too. E, working on a ranunculus. Really? <laughs> Hi, mom. Again, as you're popping on, tell me. Hi, tell me what you're working on. If you jump in late on this, you can always go back and rewatch it because it will be posted on the shop's Facebook page. Are picking up the knitting needles again? Yes. Yeah. Marauder Matt Socks, Festival of Stitches. Julie, what is it? Is it a shawl? Uh, Sarah cast on one of the projects from the Yarn Quest. Terry's doing socks. Terry, how's the magic loop going? I'm curious. Holly loves it. My mom's always here. I love it too. Oh, thanks, girls. I, I'm really, really happy with how the sweater turned out. So I will. It's almost 7 o'clock, 6.59. I'll go ahead and get started. Ooh, Diane working on the Starsky sweater. Welcome to Monday Motivation. Today is Monday, January 31st. My name is Kristen. I'm the owner of the Little Yarn Shop in downtown Saginaw, Michigan, inside the SBRC Marketplace. Shop hours are Wednesday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. I'm here usually Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Monday nights. Um, let's go with stitches. Oh, that's cool, Julie. Stacy working on magical thinking. Terry got a little laddering. Yeah, that takes practice and um, knowing which stitches to tighten up when after you turn. I think Joyce usually says the second stitch in. Um, so after you start your new side, knit the first one, put your needle in the second one, and then snug it up a little bit. Diane, yes, I'm in my shop. This is normally what I see behind the camera. I flip myself the other way. So now today I'm staring at my beautiful wall of sock yarn, and you all get to see the um, three butterfly shawls. There's a, um, there's a shawl that Julie knit which was the Casa Pinka one from last year that I can't think of right now. She did it in two different weights. Um, so yeah, I figured I was trying to get a little bit different view for those of you that maybe haven't been in the shop or haven't been in the shop in a while. Nancho, yeah, thank you, Julie. <laughs> hi, Aunt Jackie. Oh, Melissa said hi, Aunt Jackie. Good, I didn't miss it. 
Uh, so today's January 31st. I cannot believe it's the last day of January already. I, I still keep thinking last year was 2020. I, I don't know where, where the time went. Uh, that's who I am. That's who the shop is. So we can talk about what I am wearing because I'm really, really happy with how it turned out. <laughs> Thank you, Melissa. So I finished my Anchors summer shirt. I did this out of um, Malabrigo Verano, which is Malabrigo's 100% Pima cotton yarn. It's Verano, Verano, but I covered up the V with my price tags. Um, worsted or DK weight, 205 yards per 100 grams. These are the two colors that I used, clearly. I am so, so happy with how it turned out. Um, so the original pattern is written for all in one color. Melissa posted the link, but here's a little bit more of an up close picture. Maybe if it'll focus. Um, I want to make more of these. It was a really fun, straightforward knit. Um, doing the two colors, a couple things that I did. I, I think I talked to last week about knitting the first round before I switched to ribbing so I didn't get those weird bumps. Um, I was hoping because for my size, it called for four stains total. So I was really hoping I could get away with one stain of my contrast color and three of the main color. Um, I just just eked it out. Um, I, so I followed the pattern the way it was written, sleeves are done last, and I had enough, the, the cuffs were supposed to have 10 rows on each, and I had, I split the yarn, and I was knitting from both ends to make sure. So that's, that's something you can do if you, um, if you get close to the end of your yarn on something like a top, um, I had one little ball. It was like that size of the coral yarn left. So I split it in half. I, I figured out how long it was, figured out my halfway point and knit until I was getting close to that halfway point and knew that I had enough to bind off. Um, I've also been known to knit both at the same time from the inside and the outside of the ball, but it was cutting it really, really close. I mean, I had just like just enough to weave my ends in, in doing the, the pattern, the way it was written. I had lots of the, um, the, what do we want to call it? Tangerine yarn left. Um, I did go into my third stain, but I had enough of that, that I could make the sleeves longer if I wanted to. Had I done that, I could have done some decreases and then I would have used a little less yarn on the cuffs too. Did that my thing still screwed up. <laughs> and Jackie, thank you. I love this shop. So that's what I'm wearing. I want to do more of these. Um, I know I've mentioned before that the designer has so many different versions of this sweater. She's got her regular like wintery one. Um, she has a kid's one. She has a baby one. She has a cardigan. I want to do them all. I think they're, and in a cotton, I really like it. I think you could do it in uh, bamboo pop. I think you could do it in empathy. Uh, it, Bonnie, it's not brioche. It's just ribbing, just knit one, purl one ribbing. Um, super, super simple. So that's what I'm wearing. What? did I finish? Um, some of you probably saw my post on Saturday about having to whip up a last minute birthday gift. Um, I had been in the shop on Friday and I thought about knitting a hat for this friend's birthday party on Saturday. And then I went home without any yarn thinking, well, I'll just figure something else out. Well, my husband talked me into having the urge to knit something. Let's just say that he was 
encouraging me to, to give her something handmade. He knew I had plenty of time to get it done. <laughs> Marion catching me before 11 p.m. Good. Um, so I found the poise beanie. So Rasta is always the answer. Malabrigo Rasta is always the answer when it comes to needing something quick. I mean, you could knit a quick sweater in this thing. So Malabrigo Rasta is their super bulky single ply. Um, I love this yarn for so many things. I just had a customer get a sweater's quantity of it. We've got um, one of their pattern books. I don't know. We want to make all the things in there too. So we came into the shop, I printed the pattern, I picked out two colors of Rasta. Look at how beautiful those are. Cape Cod Gray and Anniversario. For those of you who are familiar with Anniversario, this batch I got is very, very pink and purple heavy. Sometimes it's more like yellow and green, but that stain is just, gorgeous. So I pulled those two colors, had enough to knit not only that hat, but a second one in the reverse. So the one I did as a gift had the gray as the main color and the multi as the contrast color. I had enough to do the opposite on this one. Look at how cute that is. And knits, pearls, and slip stitches. If you can do that, that's that's really all there is to it. Um, I didn't have, I just showed you that ball when I was talking about my shirt, but this is what I had left from the two hats. I did, uh, it has two sizes. The one I did as a gift, I did the medium large. Um, then this one, I did the small medium. There's not a huge difference. And this is still plenty. Let's see if I can put it on. Ha, I answered the question, Melissa, before you even asked it. So this is the small medium. It's snug. It's a little bit snug on me, but I, it hasn't been blocked or anything. Um, but fun and really great. Bev, the pattern is called Poise. The Poise Beanie. So great for quick gifts. So I do have, because everybody always wants to know, I have two gains of Anniversario left if you're interested in this color combo. So Cape Cod Gray and Anniversario. Um, let me know in the comments if you want us to set one aside for you and then how you're going to pay for it, whether it's going to be over the phone and we're going to ship it to you or if you're going to pop in the shop and do it that way. They are $22.99 a stain. So really, you couldn't go to like a cool locally owned store and find a, a wool hat for $23. And that's essentially what you're getting. Cause yeah, you're, you're buying two skeins, but you're getting two hats out of it and two really different looking hats. So this friend has, she's a full on boy mom. She's got three three boys. One is out of high school. The other two are in high school. They wrestle, they football, they do all this stuff. If she had had a daughter, I would have tried to get the second one done for her daughter and had like a cute little mother daughter thing. Um, she has almost a daughter in law and I thought about it, but I wanted to be able to show it off too. So that's what I finished. Um, what am I working on? Last week we talked about um, color work and the um, Bella Cash yarn. And many of you said that you wanted me to work on the cowl. And I don't know how to pronounce it. So my two pattern options were the Vari, Vari cowl or the Knowlton sweater. A lot of you said you liked the cowl, wanted to see it. I have not done a cowl in a while. That's not 
been a super bulky. So I picked colors. And I wanted something completely different than the pattern and also something a little bit um, understated. So it calls for four colors. My main color is this dark navy. <laughs> I can't pull it very far because it's attached. So main color was a dark navy. And then my three contrast colors were a pale pink. And I think as I hold them up, you'll be able to see a little bit. Pom -pom, no, pom -pom. Malcolm, I did end up putting the pom-pom on, on the one that I gifted <laughs> and she loved it. I wish she sent a friend of mine the picture. I wish she had sent it to me. I would show it to you guys. It's really cute. <laughs> Okay, so those are my three contrast colors, a pale pink, a pale green, and this color they call ice. And <laughs> as Karen and I were talking the other day, it seems like I have a little bit of a, a habit of picking colors that are like a gray, but kind of a bluey or purpley gray. It is the Bella Cash yarn. So this yarn is Merino Cashmere Nylon. I probably don't have any of the tags in here. I do, there we go. They come in 50 gram balls, 230 yards, 60% superwash merino, 30% nylon, 10% cashmere. Um, so those are my colors. And I wanted to show you guys <laughs> I, I got a little bit obsessed with it over the weekend. So my goal was to do one repeat of the chart every day. I didn't get that much done, but I did get a little bit done. <laughs> so the whole thing is um, six chart repeats and I have done four. One, two, three, four. Four. Yeah, I'm almost done with my four three feet. But I don't know if you can see, I guess if I get close enough, you can see there is subtle variation between the green, the pink, and kind of that gray, purpley gray. But I am, I'm, I'm loving this. It is stranded. Um, only two colors at a time. I should only need I for sure only need one ball each of my three contrast colors. My main color, it's going to be close. It calls for 250 yards and this is 230. So I might, judging at what I have here, I'm probably going to have to go into a second skein. The longest you carry a float is five stitches. Uh, knitting it inside out. You can, if you're worried about, Melissa asked if I knit it inside out with stranded knitting in the round. Um, I am not, Joyce does, and I, I probably should be. Um, what she means is you're not knitting it backwards. I, it's, it's a difficult thing to explain, but I was thinking about how, I'm, how I can explain it. So the way I'm knitting now is right in the front working my way around like I normally would. So when you hold your yarn like this, some, there are a few people that knit on the inside just because that's how they knit and they can't figure out why when they're done with a hat, it's inside out. Um, what some people will do in order to keep their floats loose is flip it inside out. You're still following the pattern, but what you're looking at is the, the back, the inside of the back instead of looking right at the front when, you're, when I'm knitting. So when I'm knitting here, I'm still going the same direction, following the pattern, but what that does is um, it makes it a little bit easier to loosen up your floats, so how the yarn is carried. Oh, look at, this is the one great thing about this pattern being in the round and you seam it. I can, <laughs> I am going to tidy those up a little bit, but you don't have to worry about your ends. You don't have to worry about, there was a fuzz in the yarn, so I just knotted that off. I will go back and take care of some of those things. Um, but 
I didn't worry about catching my floats when I had those five stitches because no fingers are going to get stuck in there. Um, no. <laughs> Melissa, yeah, it's a lot of tails to weave in. And I don't, I kind of went back and forth on whether I was going to carry yarns up or cut them. I decided because it is going to be inside out and I don't have to make them look fancy. I'm just going to cut it and keep going. Um, Sarah, it's not a French word, finish. That makes more sense. It is a, it's a Fair Isle pattern. So finish would make more sense, Sarah. Vari, Vari. I think that's what, I was close. Joyce knit stranded inside out on socks. Something is what I was more flat and I don't need to. Yeah, so um, yeah, with socks, you'd have to be a little bit more conscious of your gauge because they have to fit feet. I did notice um, because I'm on a 16 inch needle, I did notice there were points when I was having a hard time scooching my stitches around where my floats were getting a little tight and I was getting a little bit tighter on my knitting, but I am, I'm pretty impressed with my, with my stranded knitting. I haven't had a lot of practice other than working on my husband's sweater. Um, I mean, I've done two color work yoke sweaters, but that was big yarn and it just didn't seem as, as intimidating, but this is not intimidating at all, which is why I think it's going so quickly. Um, this would be, I don't want to get in trouble and like share trade secrets that are part of a paid for pattern, but I can show this briefly, I think. So this is the chart and funnily enough, my, if, kind of three of my colors coordinated fairly well with what she's got. Um, the orange is what I have as green, but a couple things. This would be a great use for Knit Companion, the app that we were talking about that Joyce is gonna teach a class on. You could import this in, and I believe there's a way that you can tell it to actually change the colors in the chart to match the colors of your yarn. If you set it up, that's, I think that's what the paid version, I imagine that's what the paid version, um, but it takes that mental work out of it for you. So you're not, um, they do look like little gnomes. <laughs> so you're not constantly having to look at the chart and think, okay, well, that's orange, but really it's green. Um, import it into Knit Companion. The other thing I like that she does in this is, if you look along the side, she's got these two bars. These are not part of the pattern. What they are, are what she recommends for your um, primary color and your background, your pattern color or your background color. So um, you know which one to hold in which hand. I, I'm not sure I know it makes a difference which one you hold in which hand. Um, I did it the way it's kind of displayed here where I held this one in my right hand and that one in my left hand. But it's a, it's a, pretty, it's a pretty neat thing. And once you get going, I mean, the repeat is only just a couple stitches. So it's easy enough to remember what you're doing to go all the way around. <clears throat> I have a little nose. <laughs> Yeah. Now that's all I'm going to see is, is gnomes, which is, I like gnomes. That's okay. So that is kind of my one, I made so much progress on it because other than knitting that super bulky hat, this is what I've been working on. My goal is to get it done in a week. We'll see. I think I started, Deb and I were just talking about that because she's here with her drop-in class up in the front lobby. Um, I can't remember if I started it Wednesday or Thursday, but if I don't do anything tomorrow, <laughs> I might be able to get more done on it. Um, the only other thing I'm working on is my um, simple as hat. And that's not, that's just to give my hands something to do while I'm, while I'm talking to everybody. Uh, my next project, 
I really want my next project to be another sweater, but um, I really want to force myself to get the still water finished and um, my husband's sweater finished. <laughs> I, although I already warned him, he may not have that one until next, well, this fall. <laughs> we'll see. He would have needed it in the last couple of days though when he was out plowing the snow around. So the simple as hat, um, if you saw last Friday, Josie posted a couple pictures of um, hats that she had been working on with this yarn. Um, Knit Call is the name of the yarn and it does this kind of fun self patterning thing. Um, and she's been doing baby hats out of it. I'm gonna do an adult size hat because I need more hat samples around the shop. And I wanted to do full size things. It's a lot easier to picture what a um, huge thing will look like tiny than the other way around, I guess. Yes, Melissa asked, it's the yarn that I used for the buttons sweater. So I'm gonna go grab that and show you guys. I actually do have a, a baby hat made out of this stuff too. So a couple of the other colors. So that's the color that I'm using. That's the yarn, Nick Call. And a lot of the colors that I have or have had in the past are like bright primaries or um, pastels, more what people would think about for um, little kids things. So I wanted to do something that shows um, something different than just a, a kid's hat. Um, they do have a, a cowl pattern that's done in a tube, kind of like the, the one that I, the cowl that I'm working on right now, but you don't have to change any of the yarns. You cast on fewer stitches and you just knit in the round and it gives you that same um, fair isle look in a scarf, but way easier. <laughs> Um, so a while back, I knit this cute little hat. It's called the anemone. Every time I say that, it's going to take me back to um, finding Nemo. <laughs> anemone, 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 <laughs> anemone, anemone, anemone. So this hat is done is written for kid sizes and adult sizes. It's got all these funky little coils all over it. Um, I had both the baby and the adult versions here in the shop, but somebody bought the big one. Um, I just love it. I think it's such a funky, fun little thing. And as Melissa said, I did the buttons cardigan. <laughs> with no buttons. With that yarn too. So you can see how if you were knitting a tube, Let's just take the sleeve, for example. If you were knitting a tube, you would get that really cool, it looks like Fair Isle color work without all the work. Um, so the yarn's really fun and it's a washable wool. And okay, that's really all I'm working on. Buttons, yes. Um, so the only other thing that I had notes to talk to you all about were all of the upcoming knit alongs. I, it seems like every designer has um, some sort of knit along going on all the time. And it's hard to, it's hard for me to keep up with them, but it is very easy for me to help you pick out yarns for things. So um, for example, Melissa and I were chatting about, um, there's a pattern called As You Wish coming up. And it's, she says it's an inconceivable mystery knit along. So uh, that is Mary Annarella 
or Lyrical Knits is the designer's name. Um, my mom has knit a few of her tops. I knit one of her tops, I think. Um, she, she has lots of patterns that are a play on words. Um, one of the tops my mom has is called Knit Me Maybe One More Time. Um, I posted a link to a hat around the holidays that was called Folded In. <laughs> Just fold it in. Um, so she's got this mystery knit along coming up. Hers doesn't start until February 22nd. And it goes for a month. I think you get a clue every week for four weeks. Um, and it calls for four skeins of fingering weight yarn. She does give some examples, but um, I think she gives some examples. Or maybe Melissa and I were just talking about examples. But you all know I have a whole wall of colors that we could play around with. Or as a lot of us did with, or a lot of you did with the um, shawlography shawl, if you've got one or two or even three skeins at home that you think you want to use and you need some just coordinates, bring what you have in. We can match things up. I Every other week, you guys see the beautiful wall of sock yarn behind me and no, I, we have a lot to choose from. Okay, she partnered with Miss Babs for suggestions. Oh, I might have to mail them to you. Um, that one, I do appreciate that she tells you it's going to be a long rectangular shawl. A lot of times, like the Stephen West one, he doesn't give you any idea even what shape you're making on things. Um, so that's a mystery knit along. There are a couple other knit alongs I'm aware of that are um, happening soon that are not mystery knit alongs. One is the, the one that we've been chatting about, the La Mandiola. This is the knit along that Malabrigo is hosting using um, Arroyo. And I won't, I won't go into the whole detail about <laughs> yarn and uh, yardage and stuff. But if, you, if you're interested in this and you haven't gotten your yarn yet, let me know and we can, um, I've got some kits together. I did finally get in more of the natural and so that's one of the ones that I was waiting for and more of the um, pearl color. So Diana, I've got your set aside, but I do have enough for a couple more kits in these colors. So it's the navy. You can kind of see it in there, uh, the um, Prussia blue, pearl and the natural. And you just need to decide if you want to play it safe and have an extra skein of your color B or play yarn chicken. <laughs> yes, 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 I did. So um, they have had a few issues with getting yarns out to shops in time to, um, to start the mid along. So they did push it back. So it starts February 15th. And they will be doing a live on Instagram. And the way you participate with them, if you wanted to like qualify for their prizes, um, I posted a link the other day on the shop's Facebook page to their blog post. They have like a Google form that you fill out and you give them your, like your Instagram name, your Facebook name. Um, that's so it's easier for them to, to keep track of things, but then how they how you qualify is one, using all Arroyo yarns, two, knitting during the official knit along time, and three, posting and using the hashtag Malabrigo K-A-L. Um, and then they'll go through those. They draw prizes every week. They have, I don't know, three or four, um, three or four prizes that they give away every week. So um, that's kind of cool. If you're not interested or you don't really care about officially qualifying, we can play around with different yarns um, or, yeah, you don't have to worry about posting and hashtagging and all of that stuff. 
So that one is starting February 15th. I had originally said I wanted to do something this coming Wednesday when, when their kickoff was supposed to be February 1st, February 2nd. I wanted to do something on Wednesday. I'm pushing that back. Obviously, I, I don't want I don't want somebody to get disqualified because they're not working on their thing the when, when they're supposed to be. And I want to kind of keep it all together. So my hope is still on February 16th that I can do something here. I just don't know if it's going to be in the shop or in the boardroom. I would like it to be in the boardroom, but they've had some issues lately and I haven't even had a chance to talk to Peyton, their manager. They were closed on Friday and I wasn't here on Saturday. Well, I was, but they weren't here yet. <laughs> I was here before the shop opened to get yarn. So um, keep an eye out for that. I will put an event out there once I have a little bit better idea of what's going on. Um, but I, I definitely want to do something that day. So kind of pencil me in. I am going to try to have a Zoom link for those who are out of town if they want to kind of uh, join in the chaos. <laughs> I've never done anything like that where it's been both live and on Zoom. So um, it, that'll be a whole new experience for me. The other one that I um, posted about the other day was Casa Pinka has, uh, she calls it February, um, a February knit along that starts February 6th. The pattern for that starts with a Q and I can't think of what it is. Um, it's a pattern that has a pattern of hers that's been out for quite a while. Um, uh, let me see if I can find it while we're looking. Quinn Beachy, there we go. Of course, Julie knows. <laughs> At least it did really start with a Q. Sometimes I say that and then it's like a P. Um, so Quindici is a boomerang kind of triangular shawl. It calls for um, one full skein of your primary color. I believe 250 or 280 yards of a second color and then 90 yards of a third color. Um, so that again would be a great one to have, um, like if you have a partial skein or one or two coordinating partial skeins, that'd be a great way to use some of those up. Um, then if you needed a full skein to partner with those, you know, we've got you covered. Or just stash dive and, and knit it up. That's, that's the benefit of so many of us that we gravitate to the same colors. <laughs> something like this they might work well it does look like um you want three fairly semi-solid or tonal yarns for that um but her goal with this one is really just to have it be a meditative knit um it's not going to be something that's overly tricky it's it does have some different pattern designs in it but it's not it's not meant to challenge you a whole lot it's it's great if you just need a brain break she did email the shops and say that she is doing, Casa Pinka that is, um, she's doing a sweater knit along coming up in March or April. I don't know if she's talked about it yet on social media, um, but I am looking more into that. It calls for a DK weight yarn. And she does say it would be a great first sweater for those who've not done a sweater before. Um, I have requested to get an early copy of that pattern so I can kind of test knit it, but also work my way through it on my own as the shop. Um, she, she has told us it's uh, it, in very rough form right now, but as long as we understand that as shops, maybe she'll, she'll let us work our way through it too. Um, Melissa, I gravitate to the same colors. <laughs> Casapinka or Sharon. Yes, both Casapinka and Sharon. So Casapinka is the designer, but yeah, she's saying now everything is the Sharon show. 
Sharon from Securities in charge of everything. So those are the the ones the knit alongs that I'm aware of that are coming up fairly quickly. Um, I do imagine that in July, Marie Green will be doing her four day knit along. Um, a lot of ladies will. <laughs> oh, you guys, Melissa's making faces at me. <laughs> oh, man, she got me all thrown off now. Um, a lot of people, what they did last year, what Karen did last year was have a goal to finish the prior year's sweater before. <laughs> um, finish the prior year's sweater from the four day knit along before you start this new one. <laughs> um, and it's really, it doesn't have to be a four day sweater. Obviously some of us have not finished ours yet. And um, my still water that I'm working on wasn't this past year's four day sweater, but it was supposed to be one of those. And I cast on the beginning of July with everybody else. Um, there are no knitting police nobody's going to be um, hunting you down or you're not going to get in trouble with anybody for having to take a little bit longer to to make sure that your knitwear is something that you enjoy wearing. Um, I'm hoping with her also that she will um, send shops a preview. She's really usually pretty good about doing that. Um, but we've got a few months to go for that one. What else? <laughs> for a lot bit longer, yes. Um, I think that might be all I have to chat with you guys about. I didn't post a picture of um, Victoria and me going out for coffee yesterday. We did go to Grand Traverse Pie Company in Midland. Um, we had kind of an impromptu, she had kind of an impromptu friend sleepover that we had to um, coordinate getting the friend back yesterday. Um, but that's the first time I had been there. And oh my gosh, I, I mean, I love pie. If you guys are pie people and you've not been there, they have this whole list on the wall of all the different kinds of pies they have made. They had like four, eight, 12 sweet pies that you could choose from for getting a slice. They had quiche, they had chicken pot pie. Um, now I'm hungry because I haven't eaten dinner yet. Uh, but it's a really cool place. Got some quiche, got some peach pie. And yeah, just, I mean, Obviously, it's not local, local. It's Grand Traverse Pie Company, but I've got to imagine it's a, a Michigan-based company. I, I don't know too much about it, I guess. Pizza pie for dinner. <laughs> That's pie, too. Um, the mom of Victoria's friend is gluten-free, eats gluten-free diet, and they had gluten-free um, bread, so she got a sandwich. Um, they had gluten-free bread, they have gluten-free um, brownies and pies and a few other things too. Um, did I get some for you? <laughs> no, I don't know when I'm going to see you. And okay, I'm going to put this out there. The pie at Grand Traverse Pie Company was, was really good, but my mom's pie is better. <laughs> and I'm not just saying that because she's watching this. Her crust is great. I grew up on homemade crust with Crisco and it's delicious. Um, but if I can't get to my mom and dad's house and mom hasn't made pie, this, this might be a good alternative. <laughs> okay. Um, I think that might be it for the night. I will post once I know a little bit more about Wednesday the 16th, but we've got a couple Mondays prior to that. Um, as far as I know, I'm not going to be, be missing any Mondays coming up. 
So I'll be putting the schedule out for this coming month in the events on Facebook. And I haven't mentioned this in a while, but once those events are out there, it does really help the shop if you click on there that you are interested or going. And also if you share it, if, you, if you're part of an online knitting community, any knitting groups, things like that, or in-person knitting group for that matter. Um, I appreciate it when you spread the word and um, gives me a chance to talk to more people. But if you say that you're either interested or going to the events, Facebook sees that as more activity and then shows it to more people and it's a whole thing. So I appreciate that too. All right, I think that'll do it for tonight. I hope everybody has a great week. Uh, it warmed up a little bit here today. I'm not sure the snow situation coming up, um, they keep shifting it. It doesn't look like we're gonna get much, but um, it's winter and it's Michigan, so who knows? So stay warm and keep knitting or crocheting or weaving or spinning or any combination of or cooking. Just be creative. All right, I hope everybody has a good week. And if I don't see you in the shop or talk to you on the phone, I will see you all next Monday. Bye.